This is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD, a structure so massive it's reshaping the landscape of northeastern Africa. Built on the Blue Nile in Ethiopia, this is Africa's largest hydroelectric dam. It promises to power millions of homes, drive economic growth, and transform Ethiopia into an energy hub. However, it has also sparked fierce disputes with downstream nations like Egypt and Sudan. But why is this dam so significant? How does it promise to transform Ethiopia and the region? And why it has sparked intense disputes with neighboring countries? Let's find out in this video. To understand this better, we need to go back in time. In the 1950s, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation identified Ethiopia's untapped hydropower potential while surveying the Blue Nile. These studies identified sites suitable for large-scale dams, but political instability and financial constraints delayed action for decades. Fast forward to April 2011, Ethiopia officially began constructing GERD under a veil of secrecy. Initially referred to as Project X, the dam was later renamed the Millennium Dam, before finally being called the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. The project was launched during a period of political unrest in Egypt following the Arab Spring, which Ethiopia saw as an opportunity to accelerate its plans without significant resistance. This is Ethiopia's most ambitious infrastructure project to date, a $4 billion dam entirely funded by Ethiopians through taxes, bonds, and donations. Located in Ethiopia's Benishangul Gumuz region, about 15 kilometers from Sudan's border, GERD is a roller compacted concrete gravity dam. At 1,800 meters long and 175 meters high, it will create a reservoir capable of holding 74 billion cubic meters of water. To put that into perspective, it's equivalent to nearly a year's flow of the Blue Nile at that location. But it isn't just about size, it's about power. Equipped with 13 Francis turbines housed in two power stations on either side of the dam, this dam will generate over 6,000 megawatts of electricity annually. That's enough to more than double Ethiopia's current energy output and make it one of Africa's largest electricity producers. For Ethiopia, a country where over half the population lacks access to electricity, this project is a lifeline. It promises to electrify homes, power industries, and lift millions out of poverty. So, what makes this dam such a transformative project for Ethiopia and its neighbors? Let's break it down. First and foremost is its economic potential. By generating over 15,700 gigawatt hours annually, it will provide reliable electricity to millions of Ethiopians, while enabling energy exports to neighboring countries like Sudan and Kenya. These exports are expected to generate up to $1 billion annually, money that can be reinvested into infrastructure and social programs. The dam has also created jobs, around 12,000 during its construction phase, and is expected to spur industrialization by providing affordable energy for factories and businesses. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is also a win for the environment, or at least parts of it. As a renewable energy source, it reduces reliance on fossil fuels and helps combat climate change by cutting greenhouse gas emissions. Its location in a narrow gorge minimizes water evaporation compared to downstream reservoirs like Egypt's Aswan High Dam. For Sudan, GERD offers several benefits. By regulating water flow during floods and droughts, it could stabilize agriculture along the Nile while reducing sedimentation that clogs irrigation systems. This could enable Sudan to irrigate up to 500,000 hectares of new farmland, boosting food security in a region often plagued by shortages. But as promising as these benefits are, they're only part of the story. Here's where things get complicated. The Nile isn't just any river. It's a lifeline for millions across northeastern Africa. For Egypt, a country where over 90% of fresh water comes from the Nile, the stakes couldn't be higher. Egyptian officials fear that GERD will reduce water flow downstream during its filling phase or during droughts when every drop counts. Even a slight reduction could devastate Egyptian agriculture. Some estimates suggest that losing just 2% of water could result in 200,000 acres of farmland going barren. Egypt has demanded legally binding guarantees on how much water Ethiopia will release during droughts, a demand Ethiopia views as an infringement on its sovereignty. Sudan finds itself caught in the middle. On one hand, it stands to benefit 
from flood control and cheap electricity from Ethiopia. On the other hand, concerns about dam safety remain high, especially given that it is located near Sudan's Rosaris Dam. A failure at GERD could have catastrophic consequences downstream. Despite over a decade of negotiations mediated by international bodies like the African Union and the United States, no binding agreement has been reached. Egypt has even sought international intervention to pressure Ethiopia into compliance. Meanwhile, Ethiopia argues that colonial era treaties granting Egypt disproportionate control over Nile waters are outdated and unjust. This diplomatic deadlock underscores deeper questions about resource sharing in an increasingly water-scarce world. Beyond politics, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has faced its own set of challenges. Initially slated for completion in 2017, construction was delayed due to mismanagement by Metec, a state-owned contractor accused of corruption. In 2018, Metec was replaced with more experienced contractors like Salini Impregilo, now We Build Group, helping get the project back on track. While it was initially designed with 16 turbines capable of generating up to 6,000 450 megawatts, only 13 turbines were installed due to budget constraints. As a result, its maximum output has been revised down to approximately 5,150 megawatts, still significant but lower than initially planned. Creating such a massive reservoir comes with environmental costs. The flooding of nearly 1,900 square kilometers displaced around 20,000 people in Ethiopia while submerging forests critical for biodiversity. Downstream ecosystems could also be affected by changes in water flow and sedimentation patterns. Climate change adds another layer of uncertainty. Altered rainfall patterns could impact water availability in the Nile Basin, affecting not just GERD, but also all riparian countries that rely on this vital river system. This dam isn't just about electricity or water, it's about sovereignty and power dynamics in northeastern Africa. For Ethiopia, this dam is more than just a piece of infrastructure. It's a statement of independence from colonial-era agreements that gave downstream countries like Egypt disproportionate control over Nile waters. It symbolizes Ethiopia's determination to lift millions out of poverty through development. For Egypt and Sudan, however, GERD challenges decades-old assumptions about resource allocation along the Nile, a river they've historically dominated politically. At its core, this conflict highlights a broader issue facing our world today. How do we fairly manage shared resources like rivers? With global water scarcity on the rise due to population growth and climate change, projects like this could either inspire cooperation or deepen divisions. As of late 2024, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is over 94% complete, with full operations expected by mid-2025. The fifth filling phase has already begun, with reservoir levels rising steadily toward their final capacity of 74 billion cubic meters. But what happens next? Diplomatically speaking, there are still opportunities for resolution through equitable water-sharing agreements or third-party mediation. The question is whether all parties are willing to compromise before tensions escalate further. And what lessons can we learn from all this? For one thing, development projects must balance economic progress with environmental sustainability and consider their impact on neighboring countries. Ultimately, though, GERD is more than just a dam. It's a symbol of both hope and conflict in Africa today. It stands at the crossroads of opportunity and challenge, a beacon of progress for Ethiopia, but also a source of contention in the Nile Basin. The big question now is whether this monumental project can become a model for collaboration rather than division, a blueprint for how nations can share resources fairly while pursuing their own development goals. So what do you think? Can Africa's largest hydroelectric dam bring people together, or will it drive them further apart? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.